Good day, everyone. Just wanted to do a quick video and educate you on some of the things that um, we hear all the time regarding qualified plans. And we've had so many people tell us what qualified plans are and why you, you, you should contribute to it. And we've had some people say, do not contribute to it. Put money in a, in a non-qualified plan. So let's address that and, and kind of show some things to kind of help you understand qualified plans a lot better, you know, so that, and also understand non-qualified plan because at the end of the day, you need to know and start following the masses. You need to make the decision yourself, determining what is it that you're looking for. So one of the things that you should always ask yourself, there's one simple question you got to ask yourself. Okay, well, first, let me explain what a qualified plan, for those of you that are brand, you know, don't really understand it, but you've been putting money in it, but you don't know what a qualified plan is. Well, the name of a qualified plan means an account that you could contribute money to, that you get a tax deduction for that money, but then later on, you got to pay taxes when you take the money out. It's a plan that you're used to at your job called 401k. For those of you that work for the federal government, they call it TSP. For those of you that work at the hospitals, they call them 403B. Some of you that are um, business owners, they call them simple IRA, SEP IRA. For those of you that are just contributing to something without a job or whatever, or just do, I mean, you just do additional after your job or whatever, it's called IRA, Individual Retirement Plans. So again, those are all qualified plans, uh, just to keep it simple. And then, you know, you could go into a research type of qualified plans and all that stuff. But this is just the, um, that's just the definition. Now, all those accounts go tax deferred. That means you don't pay no taxes on the interest rate that you earn. And then the contribution that you put on, uh, at, you put in what they call before tax contribution to them. So you're putting money in. So let's say you put in $10,000. That means if you make 100000 you're only going to get taxed on 90000 because you put $10,000 in. Um, and then whatever interest you earn, you don't pay no taxes on that either until you decide or, well, you decide to either take the money out for emergency or for whatever reason. If you do before you're 59 and a half, you're going to, got, you're going to have to pay taxes on that money um, and, and a 10% penalty. Now, once you reach 59 and a half, you're able to take money out of those accounts without the IRS 10% penalty, okay? So understand that. You know, I'll, I'll talk about that later about, you know, that control, the control of the federal government. I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Now, the other type are non-qualified plans. Those are like annuities, okay? Annuities, um, they allow you to contribute money into those accounts and it, it grows you, you put in after tax dollars. So those are all accounts that you can put after tax dollars, but they still give you the opportunity to have your interest rate go tax deferred. So some of those are non qualified plans. And there's the regular plans that you have, like your savings account, money market account, CDs, mutual funds. All those accounts you're putting again after tax dollars, but they're not tax deferred. So today we will talk about tax deferred accounts, which are qualified plans, and tax free accounts, which are accounts that you pay zero taxes on the gain in the on the interest, not on the contribution. Remember, the contribution is the money, your income. The gain is the money you're making on that contribution. So qualified plan, you make 100,000, you contribute 10,000, you only pay taxes on 90,000. Tax-free investment accounts, which means non-qualified plans, um, some of them you pay taxes 
on the contribution. So if you make a hundred thousand, you pay tax of a hundred thousand, and then you take ten thousand and you invest that money, and then the interest you earn on that ten thousand those tax deferred and then when you take it out in the future you take it out tax free so uh, we just want to talk about concepts so the question the first question you should always ask is which a lot of people do not ask because they've been told they're going to be on a lower tax bracket well lower tax bracket means you're broke always remember that if you have a lower tax bracket if your tax bracket is low and i'm not talking about you know, these wealthy people that, that have different ways of doing stuff. Well, I'm not talking to you. You you have tax strategies that you're doing that we as American citizens and individuals don't even know about. But you're doing those things, you know. So we're not talking about with wealth. I'm talking to the middle income America, the single moms, single dads, husband and wives, single young men, single young women working a job, trying to make it, living paycheck to paycheck. Those are the people I'm talking about that do not understand the other aspect of um, low taxes. Like, you know, we heard Warren Buffett say, I want to pay the same amount of taxes that my um, assistant, is, my secretary pays. Well, if you do, then write a check for that, man. Don't just tell us what you want to do. Write a check. But I'm sorry, folks, let's get back to what I'm talking about. So let's go back here. So what I'm saying, the question you want to ask is, if I put this money in, when I want to take it out, so I'm on a, this tax bracket today, I'm on, let's just say, I'm going to use an example here of a 30% tax bracket. I'm just breaking, just to keep the math simple, folks. Don't call me up and say, oh, there's no certain, listen, I, I know. You figure out your own tax bracket. But I want to put away, I'm on a 30% tax bracket. Now, when I take it out, the question you want to ask is, what is my tax bracket when I take the money out? See, people forget that. They never ask that question. And we're dumping a lot of money in qualified plans. But you're not asking the IRS, how much is my tax bracket going to be when I withdraw the money? So in this example, I'm going to say, hey, you're going to withdraw the money at the same tax bracket that you were when you put the money in. See, when, if we can do that, oh my goodness, folks, if we could do that, if that was possible, we'll be in a good place. I'll do that all day. So here's the situation. So let's see, you know, this is a person putting away $10,000 a year annually. They're putting $10,000. You know, this is more than a, a, an IRA. Um, less than a 401k so i just kept in the middle okay ten thousand dollars i mean you need to be saving at least that if you make a hundred thousand dollars you should be saving ten thousand dollars or more but don't even worry about that now you want to withdraw it in 30 years so you're going to live in there compounding you know growing for 30 years or whatever you're contributing 10 grand investment return was using six percent now folks check this out in a qualified plan you put in gross withdrawal at 30 in 30 years is a $838,000. Well, unfortunately, that's not all the money that comes to your hand. With a 30% tax bracket, you're going to pay the IRS $251,000. So you're going to cash flow $586,000. That's your money. All right, so you got it. So in 30 years, you're going to have, including your contribution and the interest you earn and earned on it, which is the six percent we're using, that's five hundred eighty-six thousand dollars. So think about it: ten thousand dollars a year times thirty years, that's three hundred thousand. You made an additional five hundred thousand. Well, you give back two hundred fifty-one thousand dollars, and you walked away with five eighty-six. Not a bad deal, you know. Everybody wins. IRS wins, which I do not understand. Why the IRS has to take my money? That's that's my money. I saved that money. They didn't put no money in there. I saved that money, but you know, that's that's a different conversation. Now, tax free growth. This is money that you've already paid taxes on, okay? You've already paid taxes. So that's the taxes you paid, the $251,000. That's the taxes you paid. So you walked away with 586. See, it's the same amount of money. Only 
if we put it in at 30 percent i mean if i put it at the same tax bracket and i take it at the same tax bracket then the tax the money comes out to the same on a qualified plan on a roth ira on a on, on, on a bank account whatever you know i mean not even a bank account sorry i i, I misspoke on that because bank accounts it's not it, it's not um tax-free good okay they tax you every month the this 586 is money i've already paid taxes on and i'm taking it out tax-free so you the interest that i'm earning goes tax deferred but i've paid taxes on the contribution so every time i put the money in i put it in from after tax dollars so i walk away with 500 same thing as the qualified plan so you see that they all the same thing so don't get caught up when people are trying to tell you oh you know this plan is better than this plan if you need deductions okay this is where i'm going if you need deductions for your job, I mean, for your income, because you make too much, then a qualified plan makes sense for you. If you need the deductions, okay, if you need to write off stuff every year, the qualified plan makes sense for you. If you do not need the deduction, and you want to be free from headaches, and there's other benefits to uh, tax-free good accounts, but you know you need to sit down with a financial advisor and let them break it down for you. Now let's go to the next screen. Let me see where's my next screen. All right, so here's the next screen. This is a, I did a situation where your current tax bracket is twenty five percent. So you are the twenty five percent tax bracket, uh, but you're taking that thirty percent because you made too much money. Okay, because remember, if you take it at a lower tax bracket, that means you don't have no money. So, but now you save the money, but now when you saved up a lot, you got to draw it out. So, in that case, this person they paid two hundred fifty-one thousand dollars in taxes to the IRS because they saved it at twenty-five percent. They made eight hundred thirty-eight thousand. They pulled out that. But look at where it's sweeter, tax-free account. See? So what we did here, we say is calculated results include the effect of tax rate spread between the contribution and withdrawal at the time, uh, um, time periods. So with a tax-free growth money, again, remember, you, have a, you make $100,000, you pay taxes on that 100000 but you say, I still want to save. So you pay 25% tax on the 100,000. So that's 25,000. So you're left with 75. And you took 10,000 from your 75,000 and you put it in a tax free growth account. That means the interest, that 6% that you're earning on there, you're paying no taxes on that. So the interest grows. So you actually made 628,000, right? In your eyes, you're like, man, I made more in the qualified plan. Yes, you did. But remember, you're going to pay taxes on everything when you take it out. So here you walk away with 628,000. You pay taxes on 209. See, less taxes. And then your take home was 628,513. That's a major difference. So what we'll do what? We'll, what we'll consider the time value of money. The tax free investment is better by $41,901. So again, let me explain this one more time so you understand it. And you can replay this again, please. So on the qualified plan, you make $100,000. You take $10,000, you put in your IRA, 401k, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, all those accounts that qualified accounts, you put it in one of them. Now, um, the $10,000 grows tax deferred. I mean, sorry, you didn't pay no taxes on the $10,000. Now, the interest you're earning, the investment rate of return, let's just say it's 6%, on that 10 grand, you don't pay no tax on that 6% until 30 years from now when you decide to retire from your job and you start drawing the income. Well, once you want to redraw it, the IRS is going to hit you with a tax of 30% because you put it at 25% when you are making, you are the 25% tax worker, the good use for you, you didn't have to pay taxes on that. So, you walked away with 586,000, 
but the IRS taxed you 251,000, they took their money up front. The second plan, you pay the taxes. You said, listen, I'll give you my 25% right now. I give them 25,000. So you're left with $75,000. Now you took 10,000 from your center. So you leave off of $65,000 and you put that away. Well, guess what? At the end of 30 years, you made $628,000. You've already paid $209,000 in taxes because you are paying it every year as uh, on your income. So you paid it right now so that you could take the money out tax-free in the future. So in this case here, again, if you didn't need to deduct anything and you don't know what your tax bracket is going to be in the future, because the question you should ask, what will my tax bracket be in the future? Also remember, inflation is a big player in your future income. Inflation. So a dollar today and a dollar 30 years from now are not the same thing, folks. So or if you make $100,000 today, $100,000 in the future, you're going to need to make to collect more money in the future to live the same lifestyle that you're living today, 30 years from now. So again, that's a conversation you got to have with a financial planner that understands this stuff, okay? Because not everyone do, you know, just because they call themselves that doesn't mean they understand. So you gotta always remember that. So here again, we go, we break this down. So 628,000, you walked away, so you made money, you made 41 grand. I think I have one more here, let me share that. Okay, let's see here, let's see, what do we have here? All right, so here I flipped it. I said, you are the higher income, so you are the 25% when you put the money in and you took it at a lower tax bracket, 20%. See, this one I love. If we could do that, man, wouldn't that be great? If the government said, well, you know, we'll give it to you at a lower tax bracket. Folks, we know they ain't going to do that. But I just did that on day, just for those people, the critics, you know, because we got critics. They're going to criticize what you say. So let's just break down. So I just kept it simple. So here we go again. Again, the same person, he makes $100,000. He says, I want to save 10,000. He says, take this permission from the almighty government. I want to save $10,000. They say, okay, sure. We'll take it out of your paycheck, put it in your 401k, 4 IRA, 43B, TSP. And you put it in there. $10,000, you didn't pay no taxes on your 10 grand. Now, you save that money. 30 years from now, you've, accumulated 838,000. Now you want to withdraw the money. The IRS say, well, you know what? You did it at lower tax. You did that 25%. You've been doing good. We love you. We like you. We're, we're going to go ahead and let you take it out on a, at a lower tax rate of 20% because we're just good like that. <laughs> Man, I wish they could do that. Well, guess what? You only paid the IRS. $167,000. Woo! That's a lovely day in America. The day that happens, man, we all will celebrate. So you walk away with $670,000 in that. But look at this. With the other account, tax-free account, it's not bad. Look at that. You made $628,000. Your tax is still two hundred because you already paid it on the 25%. And you worked with 628,000. So in this case, guess what? The qualified plan is better. You walked away with $41,000 because the IRS said would let you take the money out at a lower tax bracket. But unfortunately, folks, the IRS don't operate that way. They control us because they can keep us broke. Our retirement, that we have no voice. We have no voice. A broke person has no voice. You do what they tell you. A rich person has a voice. They listen. They invite you to places because you're rich. Folks, you need to be rich at retirement. So there's plans that allow you to do, to put in your money and know exactly what you're going to pay when you take it out. And when I say what you're going to pay, I mean zero. And there's no control on the maximum amount you could put in. You could put in whatever amount you want to put in. 
You want to put in a hundred thousand dollars a year? There's a plan that allows you to do that. You want to put two hundred thousand dollars a year? There's a plan that allows you to do that with no penalty, no taxes, none of that. So, if you love what we just shared with you, give us a call. The company is called Lago Financial Services. My name is Douglas Avery, and this is just a quick education for you. I'm going to shut it down. I just want to say thank you for taking the time to listen, watch this, you know, enjoy this. Share this video if you love it. If you love it, share it with your friends. Educate them. Sit down with an awesome financial planner out there that understands these things, that could break it down. Ask them questions. Ask them questions, folks. How much taxes? What is going to be my tax bracket? When I put this money in this account, what will my tax bracket be when I take it out? Don't just let them tell you, well, you're going to be on a lower tax bracket. If I'm going to be on a lower tax bracket, why are you telling me to put all my money in this account? Because if I put all my money in this account and I'm maxing it out, I'm building up a lot of money. And I build up a million dollars, which is the magic number for everybody, right? Everybody want to be, well, a million dollars at retirement, you're no longer a, a poor man. You're a rich man in the eyes of the IRS. So I just want to say that. But you know what? That's all I got for today. I just want to thank you again for, for, for listening and, and being on here. Talk to you later. Give us a call. If you're interested in setting up an appointment, send me an email, send me a text message. You know, um, our phone number at the office is 301. 220-3555 or contact the person one of our financial advisors that shared this video with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.